Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's new. We've made improvements to the model. It should generally be better access to a wide range of topics and improve functionality. Stop generating based on your feedback. We're rolling out the ability to stop generating GPT response. Thank you, because he'll keep going and going and going. So thank you, y'all. January 9th, y'all did an update. That sounds good. Get on, get that junk on out of here. All right, hold on, y'all. We're going to flip the script for a second because we got a question we need to ask them. And I need y'all to pay attention, okay? I said I was going to sleep, and I am going to sleep. I was tired, y'all. I was already yawning a moment ago, but I said I was going to... Say what? Oh, it don't like the fact that I'm doing the video and using the mic. And so it don't want me using a mic twice. And so it did let me do it yesterday. I'm going to use the mic. We got to get, you know, our routine started. So y'all just bear with us for a second, okay? I'm going to get to my point. Let's see. Come on, Kevin. Answer me. I thought y'all said y'all done updated things and corrected things. It don't seem like y'all updated much because he's still stuck. He's, look, he, uh-oh, an error occurred. He, they done occurred an error, y'all. Let's see if we can unoccurred that error. Man, I, I, I don't think that they done occurred something. Uh-oh, I think he's still going to... Oh, by the way, I just asked a simple question. He did this earlier today. I think that he he's sick or something. He probably caught Corona, Verona, uh, flu on Yeah, he probably caught the flu on uh, disease. And see, look at that. He just he just sick. Uh, I might not be able to do this, so I might have to just cancel this video altogether because he, he ain't going to cooperate this evening. I think he getting tired of me because I've been putting him through the ringer with motions and things. Oh, look at that. It's saying that I'm asking the question twice. Look at that. He ain't going to answer again. Oh, dag nabbit. Oh, shooks. Uh, either the engine you requested does not exist. The engine I requested? Or there is another issue processing your request. If this issue persists, please contact us through the help center. Why would I do that when y'all are supposed to answer my question? Hold on. I know what to do. Watch this. Let's do that right there. Hold on. We're going we gonna to let it refresh. Man, it sounds so refreshing. Okay, give it a second, y'all. Now, I got a question. I'm going to ask it. I should have copied that, but we ain't going to copy that question. We just going to get on with our getting on. So I'm going to pause y'all for a second, okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we back. I, I told him, I said, I have a question to ask him. It deals with federal tax credits and the ability to sell them. And we're going to see what he says. I'm here to help. Ask any question you want. Federal tax credits and the ability to sell them? Well, how come you ain't answering? Sorry. He's going to tell me that it ain't possible to sell tax credits. Watch. Hmm. Federal tax credits can be sold by transferring the rights to the claim the credits to a third party, usually in exchange for payment. This process is commonly Refer to a selling or transferring of tax credits. Tax credits can be sold through a variety, hold on, you're going too fast, of methods. One common method is for a company or an individual to sell tax credits to another company or individual that is able to use the credits to offset their own tax liability. Tax credits also can be sold to financial, <clears throat> financial, <clears throat> excuse me, financial, <clears throat> financial institutions. Hold on now. Don't go nowhere. 
can where yet financial institutions or investors through a tax credit fund or other financial vehicle <sighs> the value of federal tax credits will depend on the specific credit and the market conditions at the time of the sale some tax credits such as low income housing tax credits can be sold close to the face value but the value of a tax credit may also be discounted based on various factors such as the remaining life of the credit and the tax bracket of the buyer and the transferability of the credit it is important to note that some tax credits can only be used for certain types of by certain types of entities or for certain types of projects and may have restrictions on their transferability additionally it is important to seek professional advice before taking any action with your tax credits. It is certainly possible to start a company that buys and sells federal tax credits as there is a market for these type of transactions. However, starting a business of any kind comes with certain risk and complexities and a company that buys and sells tax credits would likely be no different. Before starting a company, it would be important for you to conduct a thorough research and due diligence and identify blah, 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 blah. Some of the key considerations in starting a company is to include the pending business. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Moss Adams is a well-established accounting firm, which has tax department that could help you in this endeavor. They may have professionals who could advise you on the terms of tax laws and regulations that pertain to buying and selling tax credits. It is recommended that you seek professional. Now watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to read this to y'all because he ain't never said this before. Using tax credits to offset a debt associated with a tax liability is a common practice and one that is generally permissible under tax law. However, specific rules and regulations surrounding the use of tax credits to offset a debt will depend on the type of tax credit and the jurisdiction that it's being used in. It's the United States federal tax credit. In general, tax credits can be used to offset tax liability in the year in which the claim and carry forward Hold on. That was my fault. Ooh, where is that in general? And carry forward to future tax years. We're right here. Okay. <sighs> Some tax credits, such as low-income housing tax credits, uh, can also be used to offset debt associated with the uh, project for which the credit was issued. It is important to note that tax credits that you obtain should be transferable and assignable in order to use them to offset a debt. Some tax credits are not transferable. They are only usable by the entity that it was originated with, uh, that was originally awarded the tax credit. So you will need to check with that as well. It is important. No, it ain't important.
That I promise you. I apologize for the confusion. I'm an AI system, and I do not have a memory of previous conversations. Yes, you do, you ignorant mother. It is true that tax credits can be used to offset tax liability and that some tax credits can be transferable or assignable, which would allow them to be used to offset the debts. In some cases, the specific rules and regulations surrounding the use of tax credits. So watch this. We're going to skip that because I was just asking that question. Watch this. What you mean? I asked you for a statement. He's going to give me an example of a statement. Oh, look at that, y'all. He is so special. And that's Kevin, everybody. This is how you have to do him in order to get your answers, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, from people like me, the system is learning and they are learning. They are listening to these questions, not the basic dumb questions that people ask. This thing gets a million plus people a day asking it questions in different languages. Uh, there are also tax credits that cannot be transferred. You should check. Watch this. Okay, child tax credits, earned income tax credits are non-transferable. American Opportunity Tax Credits are non-transferable. Okay, residential energy credits. Okay, what, what, well, come on, give me something good. Research and development credits. Ah, is transferable only. And work opportunity credits. I'm glad my tax credits aren't from any of those. Now watch this. Several types of tax credits have been transferred. Uh, let's see. Low income housing. Okay. All right. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. And new market tax credits. Okay. Keep going. Renewable energy tax credits. All right. Investment tax credits. All right. Keep going now. Don't stop. Research and development. Yeah, you did say that some of them were transferable above. Okay, what else? 
work opportunity tax credits. Okay. Come on, keep going. And okay. Schedule C Profit and Loss Business Forum is the sole proprietors report their business income uh, as a general rule. That's where they report it. The specific line on the Schedule C tax credits with gold depends on the type of credit. Okay, it is important to know that the IRS does not provide a specific line for a Schedule C for tax credits. In this case, it is... Aww. Yes, you are correct. Tax credits can be used business expense to offset income. It can also be reported as a reduction in income on a Schedule C. This reduction in income will lower your business income taxes and therefore your overall business taxes. Tax credits are considered property and as such they can be treated as an asset and financial statement. They are typically reported on a separate line item on the balance sheet and value the credit depending blah, 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 blah. okay thank you very much it is important to blah 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 additionally tax credits such as research and development an important language of the ai why thank you once
He's going to love me. The emergency banking act passed by Congress in 1933 during the Great Depression was in response to a banking crisis that uh, parents guaranteed regulate banks. The act, uh, 2039, did not change the nature of the currency in circulation at the time. Federal Reserve notes are still legal tender and are still backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Statement Federal Reserve notes have no value and are not redeemable and not backed by anything is not accurate. Federal Reserve notes are legal tender, which means that they uh, did not change the nature of the currency in circulation. Uh, other way, debts are discharged. The laws regulating the discharge and bankruptcy have changed over time and continue to blah, 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 blah. It's important. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do. Our legal tender, meaning that they are recognized by law as a form of payment of debt. Uh, the notes are issued. No, we asked about, watch this, but the statement or publication of individuals or organizations, which is not an official position of the government, and the statement is not entirely accurate. Federal Reserve notes are not redeemable, like silver and gold, but as legal value and full faith and credit to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do to him. This is why he uh, gets a little bit perturbed with me. One second. I did not intend to provide misinformation. You are referring to a statement made on a website publication that is not affiliated with the United States government. Whoa.
he he got no other choice. You are correct. The website treasury.gov is an official website of the United States government. is considered an official website. Upon review, I can confirm that I cannot find an official document, an official statement of the Department of the Treasury that says or implies it is important to note that many unofficial and unverified websites Apologize that for that, y'all. Yeah, he gonna apologize. Confusion, misunderstanding. The U.S. dollar, also known as Federal Reserve notes, is the official currency of the United States and is backed by the full faith and credit. Federal Reserve notes are legal tender, meaning that they can be used to pay. Blah blah. Nobody asked about any of that. It's important to note that monetary system and banking and currency in the United States have evolved over blah blah blah. 1913 established. Nobody asked you for that. Hold on, let me correct him.
<sighs> you are correct. The act you mentioned uh, passed by Congress during the Great Depression, the act granted the president broad powers. Uh, and I'm so glad he did that, y'all. I'm so glad he did that. Now I get to go to the next thing. Like I said, I already know where I'm going. Look at that. I'm so glad he said that. Who said anything about wars? Okay. The Constitution also established a system of separation of powers, blah, 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 blah. And with the mention of preventing one branch from, however, at times the national emergency and war, the Constitution grants Congress the powers to pass laws that are that may be temporarily suspend the usual constitution. I didn't mean to suggest that the Constitution specifically grants Congress the powers to suspend the Constitution. <laughs> ah, sorry, I love this. You have no idea, people.
money the people have is theirs. It's their property. Constitution includes articles of the Bill of Rights and not ratified by the states and not the people directly. If you all recall, when the Constitution was put together, they went back to the states and got the ratification. But that convention, that process, the people, they may have elected representatives, but those representatives came to the people. Hold on, let me ask him another question. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see what I just asked him? Because everybody has this opinion that the founding fathers and the so-called delegates and representatives are the ones who made the laws. Go back and look at the Constitution's first 10 amendments. Those are restrictions on government, telling government what it can't do. It is the people placing those restrictions. It is a contract. It is a treaty. I don't know why people have gotten misled. But that's what's been happening. Hold on. Let me ask this question of this idiot. No, I didn't mean to imply that the people were not consulted or that the representatives did not seek from the citizens their input during the ratification process. In fact, during the month-long ratification process, there were extensive debates and decisions and discussions among the citizens and their electorate and the public and town halls and the press and many citizens. Oh, no, don't say it, say it ain't so because everybody else doesn't believe this. How can you say this? How can you say this?
Yes, it is correct. The Constitution and Bill of Rights were ratified through a process in which the elected representatives of the people chosen by the states delegated, blah, 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 blah. Hold on. He didn't hear me. The Bill of Rights were added to the Constitution, and it was ratified. And specifically, they addressed the concerns, individual rights, and liberties. Nobody asked you about that. The process in creating, ratifying the Articles of the Constitution, Bill of Rights, written to it. No, 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 no. Hold on. Uh, process of creating the ratifying the articles of the Constitution is true that the process did not involve any direct vote or input from the public. Thank you. Okay, don't care about that. Thank you.
I know I'm correct, you ignorant mother. Anyway, uh, this was a lawful process. Let me ask you. He's going to talk about he's an AI system eventually. The laws that govern the process of ratification of the Constitution and Articles of Confederation. And it was a governing document in the United States at the time. The Articles of Confederation established a process. The Constitution was proposed as a blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's true. The process did not involve a direct vote by the people. Thank you. That's what I need you to say. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that it was required that the people be involved in the makings of the laws. It says, it is important to note that the Constitution itself provides for a process for its own amendment, which allows for the people, through their elected representatives, to propose ratification The amendment that provides is Article 5. Yes, you're going to apologize. The Constitution does not specifically specify any specific amendment that allows for the amendment to the Constitution. Yes, it is an article. The process to ratify included articles involved in elected officials. Okay. To answer your question, the process of ratifying the Constitution and Amendment, it's established. Hold on.
And this should be the last question, ladies and gentlemen. Constitution does give the Supreme Court the power for judicial review, which is the authority to interpret. Sorry, I can't let them do that. Sorry. Yes, you are correct that the Constitution does not explicitly give the Supreme Court the power of judicial review. Of course I know this. Ladies and gentlemen, most people would have accepted the first couple of answers, but I don't ask any questions of this idiot unless I already know the answers. And what I'm doing is I am literally training it. It's programmers train it. Um, I apologize for confusions. I try to convey information as best as possible, but sometimes there may be complexity or misinterpretation of a question. Let me know if there's anything. Party line. Yeah, Federal Reserve notes. It's also an important to note that the Federal Reserve notes are not backed by specific commodity such as gold, silver. They are considered legal tender, backed by the full faith.
Uh-oh. What you mean error occurred? He's going to tell me I did uh, too many uh, requests. Uh-oh. Do y'all see that? I cannot confirm or deny the statement you mentioned about the memo signed by the Director of the Treasury status. Training data includes a wide blah, blah, but knowledge cuts off 2021. Therefore, I may not access. Uh, okay.
Aw, you're an AI and you're trying your best. Aw, additionally, you apologize for any negative tone that you perceived in the previous answers. You did not have the ability to be disingenuous. So yes, you do. If you have any further questions, I'll try my best to provide accurate answers and information. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you train the system. This is how you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What I will do is we will take this and we'll put it in one of those tone PowerPoints for you guys so that you can see the back and forth, the questions, the way the questions are being asked. Because as you, what most people don't understand about the Constitution is it's not what they were told. When the Constitution was put together, you had the law of the Confederates or the laws of the Confederacy or articles of the Confederacy. Yes, and I know there was a declaration that came first, but we're talking about the actual documents once they, quote-unquote, claimed they established the country. So you had those articles, and it went from the articles to the Northwest Ordinance. And it was the Northwest Ordinance, not the Constitution, or the Articles of the Confederacy that told them to set up a government. It was the Northwest Ordinance that told them that's what they were going to do. Well, when you have this understanding, you go back and you look. When they were forming a country, they couldn't isolate the people. The people had to be part of the process because that was the selling point when they sold it to the people, that the people would be involved. That's why the delegates had to go back and they had to talk to the people. They had to have town halls. The people had to have input. That's why in states like California, propositions and other states referendums and they have to do all of that stuff why the people have to be involved they must be given an opportunity because that's the way the u.s constitution was put together originally that's why it's the first 10 amendments it is not the articles the articles were done afterward the people did not have any input or say so okay they say that it was a month-long process no it wasn't it was several years it took to put all this junk together they kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But with that being said, the articles, the people had no input in the articles. The people weren't even consulted on the articles. The people had no say so. Well, if any of those articles infringed, oh, wait, hold on. The articles apply to whom? Government. Go ahead. Go back and take a look at the articles. They don't apply to the people. The people are not bound by any of those articles. Those articles were documenting supposedly what the restraint on government was, what the limit of congressional powers were. But remember, Congress only has authority over the 10 square miles. Go ahead, go back and look at it. It talked about Article 1, Section 8. They only have authority over the 10 square miles. Congress doesn't have any authority out of the federal jurisdiction. That's why everything is a district. That's why the District of Columbia talks about the River Potomac. Because rivers never end. Hold on. Where does the Mississippi end? Oh, it ends at the Gulf. No, it doesn't. Show me where the Mississippi ends at the Gulf. Show me where the water separates. Let's separate the Mississippi from the rest of the Gulf water. You can't do it. It never ends. It actually blends into the Gulf. So the Mississippi becomes the Gulf and it becomes the Atlantic and it becomes the Indian, and it becomes the Black Sea, and it becomes the Pacific Ocean, and it becomes the blah, 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 because waters only feed off into other waters, and they connect to everybody, and that's what gives the district control over everything, because the river flows everywhere. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, this is not me telling you what I think. Go back and look at history. As you saw this stupid program, told you that the people had town halls. There were newspaper articles. Why? Because the people had to have had an input. You can't just put this junk on people and they have to obey. No, 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 no. They needed the people to participate. All right. With that being said, I was going to go. I don't know when this video is going to be up. I know it'll be up soon. But look, ladies and gentlemen, that's 76 minutes of talking back and forth with this thing on Constitution. We're going to let y'all go. All right. Y'all take care now. Y'all holla.